In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a cascading style sheet to control the formatting of your HTML. You'll notice that I have Aptana Studios open with three tabs. We have our style sheet, our HTML sheet, and then a preview of what the HTML looks like. Let's start with the preview. I have heading one, heading two, unordered list, nested unordered list, a regular paragraph table, and then I have an image. We're going to control the styling of these elements using an external cascading style sheet. Let's look at the HTML code first. I'm setting this up with a HTML5 doc type because it's very simple and easy to memorize. Just an exclamation point and you'll see here the tools are fantastic in Optana. It shows you how things should be set up. The other thing I want to show you is that if you put in an error, it will immediately tell you something is wrong. I am finding that I like this software very much and it is very useful. The best thing you can do is immediately before you start typing in your code, save your project because if you save it with the correct name and the HTML file is just lesson9-1.html, my cascading style sheet is simply lesson9-1.css. I saved them before I started coding anything so that I would see if I had errors in my typing. I find that tremendously helpful. To link to my style sheet is this line here. It has to be in the head section and you tell it that it's a link and then REL, which defines the relationship. Type is the type of linked file. href is the location of a linked file. And since there are no slashes here, you know that we're just referring to a file in the same folder as our HTML. You'll see that I have created an H1 tag, an H2 tag, an ordered list with a nested unordered list and this does have the requirements for your homework assignment. I have added an image and a paragraph that closes my body, that closes my HTML sheet. The more interesting portion is the CSS. Notice that I did not declare this as public or system. Some of the things that it tells me that are wrong will not interfere with it displaying properly. Okay, in my CSS, this is very, very simple. Each item that I code is coded by giving the element, in this case the body, and you'll notice if you hover over it'll tell you what that is. And this does a fantastic job um, as well, giving you hints if something's wrong. Let's say this number here, color, is actually the font color. And you might have misguessed and put in font color incorrectly. If you have this with incorrect syntax, it will be pink, not black. You will get an X here that says property font color doesn't exist, and it will highlight which row the error is on. The correct command is color, and it's not just a font color, it's a four color. So if you had a horizontal rule or anything like that, it would appear the same way. I have my font family, Arial Helvetica Sans Serif and that will inherit to everything else unless I override it. So all headings, all paragraph tags will be the same except here in the unordered list where I have set it to times New Roman that has to be in quotes because there are spaces times and serif. So I've redefined the heading 1 through heading 4 tags with colors and setting them to bold. The H1 I set a transform into uppercase and you'll see here in HTML, I coded this heading one using CSS, and when it appears, it capitalizes the using for me. For H2, I put a text indent of one EM, which is the average size of a character text decoration underline. My heading two is right here. It's tabbed in, and it's underlined. My unordered list, they get a color, a font weight, a font family, and a font size, 
which strangely is only really applying in the middle one. You'll notice that these are a little larger, but everything else applies to the whole thing. I'm not quite sure why that is. And then for my paragraph, I set the line height to 1.5. For my image, I did this on purpose. It's floating to the right. It has a two pixel solid black border and its padding is five pixels. What I want you to notice with that is that the padding appears between the image and its border. So that helps you know padding, border, margins would be on the outside. So your assignment is to create an external style sheet, attach it to your HTML document, and modify the body tag to change the background color, the font family, and the font color. Modify, modify the hanging, I'm sorry, modify the heading and paragraph tags. Use padding with at least one element. Modify the image tag and add it to an image on your page. Here I am. And add an image to your page. And then make sure you create an original HTML document demonstrating the use of every style that you modified. It's important to practice your coding to make it make sense to you. The more coding you do, the more it will make sense. So in Angel, I have linked to this sample sheet where I have it published. I have also linked directly to the style sheet. If you put a hyperlink to a style sheet, it will actually appear in your browser just like this. So you can see that my style sheets are out there for lessons 9.2, lessons 9.1, and each place that I use a style sheet in the future, I will link to in the course so that you can go and read how I did my styles. I don't want you to do an exact copy of mine. You can use mine as a pattern, but pick different colors, different fonts, modify different things. The more you practice, the easier it gets.